Nationwide, 100 million people, including 28 million kids, do not live within a 10-minute walk to a park. Let's take it outside. A new podcast series from the Sierra Club will explore the nature all around us and the people working to protect it and ensure access for all. We hope you'll join us. For more information about Let's Take It Outside, visit sierraclub.org slash podcasts. Grumpy Old Geeks, a weekly talk show hosted by Brian Schulmeister and Jason DeFilippo discussing the finer points of what went wrong on the internet and who's to blame. Welcome to Grumpy Old Geeks. I'm Jason DeFilippo. And I'm Brian Schulmeister. Quick update, Brian. Mm-hmm. The story I was talking about last week about the diploma mills uh, was not from 404 Media as previously reported by me. Uh, I got it. I got it confused with a story from 404 that was about uh, fake IDs using AI. Okay. And how? Uh, but the the story about the diploma mills was from Darknet Diaries. So, <laughs> see, shit happens. Is what I got to say. You miscurated. I did. I miscurated. Yep. <laughs> That's exactly what I did. All right. I, I highly recommend the Darknet Diaries episode is uh, exact sells fake diplomas and degrees. What could go wrong with this business plan? Wasn't that Trump University too? That way it was. Yes. Yeah. Okay. This is just the Pakistan version. I got to try exact steaks. I wonder how they are. Mm, and exact water. I'm sure they're great. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I put in a link to the Ookla speed test app uh, Easter egg. On the in the show notes because I got people asking me about it and I could not remember for the life of me how to turn it on. <laughs> Google so, people, that's how I found it. Yeah, well, we turn into Google, Brian. When, as soon as we open our big ass mouths, I know. I'm, I'm my family's Google. I'm my friends' Google. I'm currently the Google at my office. Yeah. In the news. A uh, hat tip to Yuri here. Uh, he sent this one before I even caught it. Uh, keep Just to keep the pink slips chat going on, Paramount is doing some work. Paramount Global will lay off hundreds of employees following a record-setting Super Bowl that garnered more than 123 million viewers across all company platforms led by CBS, but that's not stopping them from cutting people's jobs. About 800 employees are roughly 3% of Paramount's workforce. Sources familiar with the matter told Yahoo Finance. Here's the, uh, the bullshit speak from Paramount CEO Bob Backish. I am confident this is the right decision for our future, he wrote. These adjustments will help enable us to build on our momentum and execute our strategic vision for the year ahead. And I firmly believe we have much to be excited about, he continued. Hopefully that means better Star Trek. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. You know, or selling and rolling up into something else because that's, that's probably, probably what's going to happen. <laughs> probably what's going to happen, yeah. yeah. Uh, continuing on, Instacart lays off 250 employees or 7% of its workforce to quote-unquote reshape the company. <laughs> Uh, in an SEC filing, Instacart says the layoffs will allow it to better align its organizational structure with current, quote, business needs. Stop. stop Jesus, fuck. Even you can't work through their bullshit. <laughs> no, I it's can't. It's too thick. <laughs> business needs, top strategic priorities, and key growth opportunities. Yes, right. a.k.a. business. Mm -hmm. They all want to do business. Yep, business people doing business. Well, mm -hmm. so after 800 and 250 employees, 60 may not seem like much, but for Mozilla, that's about 5% of its workforce. Which is amazing. <laughs> I thought that would be about 100% of its workforce about now. Yeah, these days. I don't know. So uh, yeah, Mozilla is uh, firing around 60 people. So that's about 5% of its workforce. Most of those who are leaving worked on the product development team. Okay. Uh -huh. What else do they do? <laughs> I don't know what they've been doing, but here's their bullshit speak. We're scaling back investment in some product areas in order to focus on areas that we feel have the greatest chance of success, some Mozilla spokesperson told Engadget in a statement. To do so, we've made the difficult decision to eliminate approximately 60 roles from across the company. We intend to reprioritize resources towards products like Firefox Mobile, where there's a significant opportunity to grow and establish a better model for the industry. Let me, let me, let me translate. There's a significant opportunity to grow, meaning nobody uses your shit now, so the entire <laughs> internet is your opportunity to grow. Your yeah. bullshit Most downloads ever, Jason. Most downloads the, ever. Because yeah. they got one, finally. Uh, have you ever tried that thing? No. I gave. Oh, up. I stopped using Mozilla decades ago. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like it. Definitely yeah. feels like it. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, well, a court has ordered Elon Musk to testify in the SEC's investigation of his Twitter takeover. So this was a tentative ruling made back in December. Uh, but uh, now it's uh, not tentative anymore. So you got to go <laughs> and talk. <laughs> 
So we, they have some questions about how you ended up taking over uh, Twitter, which you now call X, but nobody else does. Um, yeah, it, it, all the things that we talked about at the time, not disclosing his stakes in Twitter, not uh, basically just lying and being a dick. Oh, you mean Elon's going to Elon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, I, I've, I finally figured out – this is where I'll draw the line on the Twitter X, Twitter formerly known – X formerly known as Twitter, all that shit. Yeah. I'm going to call it Twitter until they change the URL. If I got to go to Twitter.com, I'm going to Twitter. Once yep. they change it to X, I'll go to X.com. I'm just going to call it Twitter until it disappears. Yeah, next week probably yeah. at this rate. <laughs> And uh, keeping on with the good news from Elon, Tesla driver says he's not sure if he killed a pedestrian because he was on autopilot. Well, I have questions, but I'll <laughs> yes, let you continue. Everybody has questions here. <laughs> uh, a 42-year-old Tesla driver who first denied that he killed a woman with his Tesla is now right. claiming he can't remember because he was checking his emails because he had autopilot on. Hmm. <sighs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, it's not a laughing matter that he actually killed somebody no, with his Tesla. No, no, no. But uh, yeah, he's he, and he hasn't even been charged yet. But they've got they've got, gathered enough evidence. They've pinged his cell phone at the location. They've got you know his car that has been dented and hair and blood samples from the actual vehicle. So they think they got their guy. Right. <laughs> you think they haven't charged him yet? But he's coming out ahead of the game, saying, "I had autopilot on. Not my fault." I, I like checking my emails on the way to work when I should be paying attention to the road. So I I think they're probably trying to move him into an involuntary manslaughter charge instead of like uh, uh, First fleeing degree. the scene, or, yeah. you know, hit and run because yeah. it's probably going to get less. But well, that's I mean, obviously, this is a load of shit. But um, <laughs> I Again, if you have a, a CEO of a company who keeps coming out and calling it self-driving and keeps releasing it and keeps pushing the self-driving bullshit line, well, some yeah, people this, are going to believe that. Yeah. Bad marketing actually kills. Yes. It actually kills. Yeah. Uh, and uh, bad self-driving also kills cars because <laughs> I love it. You don't you generally see this in San Francisco, but a crowd of uh, – Vigilantes basically torched a uh, Waymo car in San Francisco. Just, just <laughs> why? Said, Fuck it. We've had enough. We've <laughs> they had just enough. lost it. <laughs> they lost it. Okay, they lost their shit. Yeah. So yeah, it listen, was just San Francisco. I I lived in the Venice Santa Monica area during the height of not only Bird but Prius, and I kept my cool. Yeah, well, I'm just saying. <laughs> I think San Francisco is a little bit different now than it used to be. <laughs> right. Um, Yes. The, I mean, it, it was devolving into the land of man poo and, and homelessness before I, I left. And it's gotten apparently just apocalyptic there now. So and, and thus, the, thus the burning of the self -trust. I mean, how San Francisco of a headline can you get? You know, vigilante crowd destroys autonomous like driverless vehicle. That is something as we were when we were kids was just straight out of sci fi. And now no, it's that, just, that, that could be a paragraph in Snow Crash. Yeah, and now it's just normal. Yeah. It's like, well, of course they did. Of course they, <laughs> of course they torched it because yeah. apparently one hit a, a bicyclist the other day. So uh, that's you know you, you don't get the the fixy fixy uh, wheel and vegans on your bad side because they will fuck you up. Kill that's... the robot! Kill the robot! <laughs> <laughs> what else we got? All right, twenty three and me. Twenty three and me is in a death spiral. Almost anybody who wanted a DNA test already bought one. Uh, there's been a nightmare data breach that has ruined the company's reputation, and the stock is so close to worthless it might actually get kicked off the Nasdaq. So, what do you do? Well, CEO Anna, what, what? Wojcicki. Wojcicki. Yeah, so good. Yeah. Well, she's basically running around and letting investors know, well, we got one other thing we could do. and We're going to make a lot of money. We're just going to sell all the DNA data. That's it. What they said that they would never, ever do. Exactly. <laughs> and this is basically a no-win situation if you're concerned about this and you know 23andMe has your data because either the company survives by selling the data or it'll go out of business, get purchased and sold off for parts, which means other companies will get to sell off your data. Which I thought already had happened. I thought that was I thought that was already done. That somebody they had took made over, a but... deal with one particular uh, healthcare provider. I think that okay. was the thing, and it was you know all with all the caveats of of course it's randomized and anonymized data, which it's oh, not. of course. And, uh, uh, but yeah, so now that that exclusive deal is gone, so they are free to sell left, right, and center. 
Oh, Except for the fact that they said they'd never do that. Yeah. I mean, all it takes is a terms of use update that nobody pays attention to and it's done. Exactly. Yeah. You know. So there you go. It's all out there. Yeah. Uh, so I was pretty pissed off about this. Uh, uh, Amazon basically, basically, you know, saying we're going to put ads into the Prime Video experience that you are paying for if you're a Prime member. Oh, yes. And everybody was pissed off about this. And of course, the class action lawsuit is coming. Uh, but there's been a new wrinkle in this as well. In addition to getting the advertisements, if you don't want to pay that extra $3 per month to not get the ads, you also don't get Dolby Vision or Atmos. So they're not just adding ads, they're stripping features. They're, they're stripping features as well. Yeah, yeah. Let's sue the fuck out of them. Yep. The lawsuits <laughs> are coming. The California federal court has already started one, so it's going to be filed pretty soon. Uh, expect to get your $2 out of this because there's absolutely no chance that they aren't violating the terms of the agreement that they made with all of us. So, yep. yep. I turned on uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, the new show and got the, got the notice that ads were going to be in there. And I'm mm -hmm. just like, okay, well it, 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 it supremely pissed me off. Mm -hmm. Just, just the notice that just they the were going to get pissed me The off. principle yeah. of the thing. I'm paying for it already. Yeah. Not to mention that the show was trash. <laughs> Well. So I, I, I protested by not watching the rest of the series, so they don't get to get my, my ads anyway. Right. Still uh, got your money, though. Yeah, they do. Well, they didn't get my two ninety nine three dollars $3. I'm not going to give them my $3. Yeah. Kiss my ass. Not like they've got that much to watch anyway. Um, the Taliban has shut down the queer.af domain, which, by the way, is a great domain. It is. I gotta say, that is a great <laughs> domain. <laughs> Uh, which has, which has in uh, turn shut down a big Mastodon community. So that, that kind of sucks. But, you know. Well, they just got to repoint their, get a new get a new domain name. They'll be fine. Spread the word. Yeah, they could get queer.ly. Oh, wait, that's oh, Libya. Wait. That's that's why yeah. I left Libya. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I had dastardly, dastard.ly. Uh, when I was working for Coldplay, we, we had the .ly as a short domain. It was like CDP dot ly or something like that uh -huh. news links and all that and i remember i felt i felt dirty every time i had to go in and renew the domain because i was like mm -hmm. i know where this money's going exactly <laughs> yeah i just i ended up dumping them just because i knew at some point this this was going to happen and uh I, I didn't stick around to find out but yeah this is this is what happens when terrorists run your country and don't like gay people yeah so speaking of terrorists Elon was giving blue check marks to literal terrorists. Hey, anybody pays up. Yeah, yeah. Seriously. I'm sure Amazon gives at most to anybody pay any terrorist paying the extra three bucks too. <laughs> That's right. That's <laughs> right. Oh. <laughs> so uh basically he's in big trouble on this one too, because he was taking money from groups that the US government said you're not allowed to actually do business with. Yes. It's, yes, the uh US Department of the Treasury's Office of Foreign Affair or Foreign Assets Control, uh, uh the OFOC. Rolls oh, off the tongue. <laughs> yes, uh, uh Elon should be saying, Oh fuck. Here comes <laughs> OFOC. So yeah, uh he was just sell he sells check marks to anybody who wants one. Well so, and there's nobody there's nobody in the building checking anyways. No, there's not. This is an automated process. You put in your credit card. There's your blue check, sir. Thank you very much. They do check uh, if you change your profile picture. Right. That's what they do check. I, I have my – I changed my my profile to my sexy new profile photo mm -hmm. and they took me down for three – they took my check mark away for three days. Three days. You know how much terrorist activity I could have done in those three days? Well, you know, I only get my terrorist instructions from verified terrorists. Exactly. Today's episode is sponsored by Private Internet Access, America's number one virtual private network, also known as a VPN. Even if you use incognito mode, your internet service provider is storing your browsing data and many times even selling it. But Private Internet Access, or PIA, can help. PIA encrypts and reroutes your internet traffic through one of its own servers, hiding your data from your internet service provider or network admin. And with servers in over 75 countries, you can get unrestricted access to geoblock content around the world. PIA comes with an easy-to-use app and browser extensions for all devices, a rock-solid privacy policy, open-source security, advanced customization settings, and it was just ranked the fastest VPN in the world by PCMag. If you sign up with PIA right now, you can take advantage of a special deal only for GOG listeners. By using our link, gog.show slash VPN, you can get complete digital privacy for less than $2 a month 
and four extra months for free, which means only one buck ninety eight cents a month and up to eighty three percent off. That's so much more inexpensive than virtually every other VPN on the market. And if you get it right now, you can take PIA's thirty day risk free challenge. You can try it out for thirty days and see if you like it. If not, just return it for a full refund. So go to gog.show slash VPN and try out the best VPN on the planet completely risk-free. That's gog.show slash VPN. This episode is brought to you by Mood. If you're on the lookout for a legal THC experience that's not just about chilling out, but also about boosting your creativity and focus, let me tell you about Mood. It's a game changer. Mood has just launched their most potent product yet. They're introducing hemp-based THCA flower, the next big thing in the legal THC world. You've got to check it out, along with their incredible range of products like flowers, gummies, vape cartridges, and more. I personally recommend the Sleepy Time Delta 9 THC gummies to help you sleep easier. They have 15 milligrams of Delta 9 THC, 15 milligrams of CBD, 15 milligrams of CBN, and half a milligram of melatonin, which is a very gentle dose to get you gently on your way to your playdate with Mr. Sandman. Now, here's why Mood's THCA flower is a big deal. When you heat THCA, it turns into THC, giving you that classic high you all know and love. And Mood's lineup includes 10 high-inducing strains, their most potent selection ever. With Mood, you're getting THC products you can trust. Everything they offer is federally legal, extracted from hemp, and undergoes regular third-party testing in DEA-registered labs. There's something for every mood at Mood. Whether you're looking for a euphoric, energized, creative, or chill vibe, they've got a strain for you. Whether you're a newbie or a seasoned user, you'll find something you love, from tasty gummies to classic flour in convenient pre-rolls. So don't wait. Try Mood's new THCA flour today. Remember, you get 20% off your first order in a free THCA pre-roll. Just visit hellomood.com and use promo code GOG. That's H-E-L-L-O-M-O-O-D dot com. Code GOG for 20% off your order and a free THCA pre-roll. Check it out and find your mood. Media Candy. Well, the Looney Tunes uh, Coyote versus Acme movie, is the, the fate has finally been sealed. Uh, they're going to burn it. They're just going to burn the damn thing because... David Zaslav. Zaslav, yeah. Z- <laughs> We're trading off on name pronunciations today. I know. <laughs> uh, basically, he couldn't get all the money that he wanted. And he's going, instead of, somebody offered him just a little bit less than what he wanted for the movie. And he said, no, we're just going to take the tax right off and burn the movie. Say, screw it. We need a hero at Warner Brothers Discovery to just drop this on the, on the torrents. Yeah, we do. We definitely that, do. That, that, they should do it as a company and never even admit to it. That is the cool move. Fine. You want to take the hit for it? Drop it out on Pirated Bay. Yeah. So, And we also need a hero in Congress to step in and say, you guys got to stop doing this shit. Yep. You, you know, they're just stealing taxpayer money by doing that. That's all they're doing. Yeah. It's, so. it's, just, it's corporate fuckery. Yeah. And in, in plain sight, mm-hmm. which is the really shitty part. Yep. Oh, well. Uh, watched a movie with the wife uh, called Past Lives. This is a it's an Oscar nominated movie. It is a it's the kind of movie that you don't watch much anymore because since uh, since superheroes have taken over, it is slow. It is mm-hmm. all dialogue. There is not a single special effect anywhere in this movie. It is a small story about two people and uh, they grew up together and then moved apart and then have one day that they spent uh, around each other talking about their lives. That's it. And it was fucking phenomenal. All right. <laughs> it was great. I highly recommend it. Storytelling. Miss it. <laughs> yep. And uh, then I watched The Greatest Night in Pop over on Netflix, which is uh, all about the, the We Are the World recording sessions and how it came to be and everything. Uh, I had not realized they recorded everything. And this is fascinating. Um, it's It's just really cool, not only to see like all these mega celebrities back in their prime back in the day and then realizing how much fucking plastic surgery most of them have had since then. Um, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> but uh, just just how they interacted with each other and seeing people like fanboying and fangirling over other people and uh, just the mm-hmm. whole process and just the art, the artistry involved and the egos and just 
it's insane. I, I, I can't recommend it enough, especially, well, I, I, it, this will mean absolutely fucking nothing to anybody younger than us, but for us, this is yeah. great. So. Yeah, it's fantastic. I'm a, we're watching it in chunks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's hard to it, sit down and watch the whole way through. So I would do yeah. that too. Yeah. Yeah, we're doing like half an hour chunks and we're, we did the first half hour and it was just, it was fantastic. And we're like, we don't want to get burnt out on it. Mm-hmm. So let's just take it, take it a, a block at a time. Like, but I don't yeah, know that, how far, it's really cool. I don't know how far you've gotten in it. And it's, it's not really a spoiler. This is stuff that happened a long time ago, but there yeah. is a moment where Sheila E finally recognizes that she is only there because they wanted Prince there. Yeah. <laughs> and she totally, she gets it. Like it's, it's pretty uh-huh. cool. So um, I don't watch a lot of stand up comedy anymore just because I found it's not that interesting to me. But uh, this 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 one was kind of going semi viral and I'd heard a lot about it. And some people that I trust told me it was great. Uh, so I gave it a go last night. It's Jacqueline Novak. Get on your knees. This is the comedy special that basically use, is all about the blowjob and uses the blowjob as the motif to that the whole show is wrapped around. OK, it is fucking phenomenal. OK, like the there just aren't comedians like this anymore. This is like, this is like Monty Python when I was like five years old or Eddie Izzard in my (laughs) twenties. It is, she is smart. She is funny. She drops references like Dennis Miller esque references. You better have, you should, you need a literary degree to probably get everything that she drops in this special. (laughs) It is awesome. Like I can't recommend it enough. It's really good. I will add it to the queue. Yep. And uh, we got some uh, release date news. Somebody feed Phil season seven is coming March 1st. Should, so we're going to get some new I should episodes. hurry up and finish season five and six then. Yes. I, I've been holding on to them because, you know, it's just like this feel good thing. And then as soon as I heard seven was coming, I talked, I said to my wife, like, all right, let's, let's get through those other ones then. Yeah. Uh, I, I can't believe that they made a season seven with most of us who actually like the show holding off on watching five. And, yeah. I think it's just because we add it to the, we add it to our, our queue they they count that as close enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess so. You know, whatever metric you want to use, go for it. Yeah, uh, a show I will be watching since it's the final season, and I just feel like I have to I have to watch all the Star Trek, no matter what. I don't know if you are, but Star Trek Discovery or Disco fifth and final season will finally has a release date of April fourth, with a two episode premiere before releasing the remaining eight episodes of the season weekly on Thursdays. I've never heard it referred to as Star Trek Disco. I, they, you know, they sell the shirts. More, They're awesome. Really? Because yep. that that is more in, interesting than the actual show itself. <laughs> well, I got to see how they're going to wrap this. I heard. It's, I hear it's going to be action packed. That's what I hear too. We'll see. So we'll see. Oh man, uh, John Stewart is back at the Daily Show. Did you get a chance to check him out? I haven't because I haven't quite figured out how the fuck I could watch it here in Canada yet. So I'll, I'll, YouTube. I yeah, just caught I guess it on YouTube. YouTube. Uh, yeah. Uh, I got to remember to add it to the DVR, but yeah, I just caught it on YouTube and uh, yeah, God, it's so nice to have him back. It's, it's great. It's not, it's not that other show on Apple. Okay. It's just Jon Stewart being back as Jon Stewart at the Daily Show. Yeah, I got to catch it. You just got to watch it. Yeah. It's, uh, I mean, you get, you get all the feels. <laughs> so I'm, I'm happy he's back. All right. Well, something else that's coming back, Downton Abbey. Why? Well, I'm happy about this because they aren't going to do another movie. They're actually going to do a full seventh season. Why? I don't know. I I like it. (laughs) I'm happy about it. I can't wait for it. I'm going to watch it. So will you. Are they going to be building websites now? Because we have to be that far in the future that they have to be coming up on the technology revolution. Mary is the dowager now. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Come on. Yeah. We'll see. I never even saw the last movie. You know, uh, I, 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 the movie is just that's why i'm excited that they're actually going to do a season again because they can actually get into stories and not just you know do aha moments and all that stuff yeah the movies just seem like a quick series of vignettes of things that you're like you have to build the story in your head it like exactly later on exactly they're coasting on previous story in the movies that's why i'm uh, i have hope that a whole season is going to have a story <laughs> yeah okay anyways uh, in uh, news of destroying our youth, uh, there's a big Monty Python spat that's broken out on Twitter, um, mostly because uh, it, it came out that basically like somebody was like, Eric Idle's got a great Twitter presence. I don't know if you follow him. He's very nice. He's very funny. Uh, but somebody was like uh, intimidated that they were all rich. And he was like, I don't know why you think we're loaded. 
the show that we did uh-huh. for the BBC, the BBC kept all the money. We made some money from the movies, but that was 40, 50 years ago now. Uh, and then he complained because Terry Gilliam's daughter is actually managing the estate and he's not happy about how they do it and blah, blah, blah. And pointed out that John Cleese had fired their previous manager and then John Cleese weighed into it. And John Cleese is, is a grumpy old man. There's no doubt about that. He is, uh, he courts trans- controversy wherever he goes. He's very, he would be MAGA if he lived here, I suppose, but he's still kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> I thought you know, he did live here. Doesn't he live in Santa Barbara? I don't know. I thought he still lived in London. Oh, no. I, I know mean, Eric. I, I know Eric Idle lives in LA. I've been to his house. So, yeah, no, we've been to John Cleese's house for uh, one of his. I'm almost positive he lives in Santa Barbara. Okay. So, yeah. Well, yeah. anyways, he came out and said something like, I always loathed and despised Eric Idle, but that's not what he said. And he walked it back. It was a joke. Blah, blah, blah. Anyways, I, I don't like seeing octogenarian previous heroes of mine fighting with each other. Can't they all just get along? <laughs> Well, John Cleese has always been kind of a dick. Yeah, so, he has. I mean, he's a funny dick, but he's a he's dick. a very funny dick, but he's a dick. Yeah, but yeah. I always thought you if know, they were going to get rid of uh, what's his face from Top Gear, they should have brought John Cleese in to replace him. Oh my god, that would have been fantastic. Yeah. That would have been perfect, <laughs> perfect. Except he couldn't fit into any cars because he's so damn tall. Yeah, that's true. And speaking of Top Gear, I, there's another special coming. Snooze. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that, it's called contractually obligated is what it's called. <laughs> <laughs> it's called we got to get Amazon. those three bucks for Atmos so when you watch it. Yeah, it's just them doing donuts in the Amazon parking lot now. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> oh, So uh, AMC is going to be paying an $8 million class action lawsuit. Okay. $8.3 million actually mm-hmm. uh, because they put a, a tracking pixel on their website and uh, it broke a 1988 law about not selling viewer data. Okay. So, so basically, they left the uh, the Facebook ID in some of their pixel tracking stuff, and they left it unencrypted. So somebody found it and said, "Hey, they're passing along what movies I'm watching." Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, this so? literally comes back <laughs> from. Yeah, from the Video Privacy Protection Act oh. from 1988. So if you went past so, that beaded curtain and you rented some movies from back there, they weren't able to release that. Exactly. <laughs> Basically, it was like Blockbuster, you know. <laughs> so don't go in the back room. So I just thought that was pretty funny. So, um, yeah, if, you, uh, if, if you're one of those few people, that's why there's only uh, – Six million people are going to be getting paid out on this. So okay. literally, you're going to be getting about a buck fifty because nobody nobody subscribes to AMC Plus. I, I, I wouldn't you? even subscribe to Plus Plus. Ups and doodads. Well, you remember our good old friends, Privacy, that advertised with us for a short period of time, where you could uh, spin up basically a virtual credit card and use yes. that online. They're not going to be in business much longer. Okay, why not? Apple Cash will soon offer a virtual card number in iOS 17.4 beta that could be used to shop online <laughs> where Apple Pay isn't available. That's a uh, new security code for every transaction, and the number can be accessed in Safari's autofill for easy use. So you can basically just set up virtual credit card numbers with Apple now on your phone, done and done, taken care of. See you later. Oh, but you got to use Safari. Ooh. <laughs> I don't like Safari. I'm sure they'll roll this out into other browsers. Yeah, I'm sure. But that, that that's difficult. great. Yeah, that's no, great. it's a really yeah. it's a great idea. I'm I'm happy they're gonna do it. So mm-hmm. no word on if that's going to be international. That was a problem with privacy for me when I moved here. US only. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. It's just US only. Uh, Google's Gemini AI is out, and uh, you'll be shocked to hear this. Even if you delete your conversations, they keep them for up to three years. Even if you opt out, because we covered this last week, and we, it was, you know, they opt you into the three years no matter what, but you could have opted out, and they said they were going to keep it for 72 hours. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Google being Google, Jason. <laughs> okay. And, and the funny thing is, uh, they've already upped the, uh, it was like uh, Gemini, Gemini, Gemini. Nobody could speak today. Uh, it was uh, Gemini 1.0 last week, and now it's Gemini 1.5. They've already, they've already revved. By 0.5. Yeah. Now with less privacy. So, now with less privacy. Exactly. We need to rename these sections now. I, I am determined that because everything now in Apps and Doodads is going to be just AI based. <laughs> um, 
we and we 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 should have renamed it you know back when uh, bitcoin was a thing you know we should have just named that criminals going to criminal right that could have been our blockchain segment <laughs> and uh we can just call this one the end of everything yeah because the only problem is that's work yeah we got to make got to write bumpers. music we got to get bob on front of a oh. microphone yeah can we ai, AI? It? yeah seriously yeah. let's 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 call up 11 labs and get bob cloned <laughs> <laughs> we'll just do that sorry bob <laughs> Okay, so a couple bits of open AI news here. Open AI disrupting malicious uses of AI by state affiliate threat actors. Okay. Uh, So they are basically taking down, (laughs) I love this. They disrupted groups called Charcoal Typhoon and Salmon Typhoon from China, (laughs) Crimson Sandstorm from Iran, Emerald Sleet from North Korea, and Forest Blizzard from Russia. These sound like World of Warcraft clans. I was going going even further back. I was like thinking my G.I. Joe comics that I read when I was like 10. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, here comes Agent X from Charcoal Typhoon. (laughs) Cobra Command is called in Salmon Typhoon. That sounds just like the shittiest superhero power ever. <laughs> Form of seven typhoons. Still better than that guy that just turned into a bucket of water. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, the Wonder Twins. They're um, fucking great. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so they're working to to get these guys, uh, you know. The thing is, they said that even though we're 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 playing whack-a-mole with these guys, everything they're doing isn't really that bad. They're not really doing anything horrible because because it's in their best interest to say, oh, they can't do anything horrible with open AI, you know, <laughs> because they don't they, they they they're trying to cover it from both ends to say, yeah, we got them, but they weren't really doing anything bad because we have guardrails and they can't do anything that bad. So it's a tightrope they're walking over there. You've heard of Sharknado. Well, here comes Salmon Typhoon. <laughs> Oh, God. Um, I saw this one. AI companions promise to combat loneliness, but history shows the dangers of one-way relationships. Sadness there lies, my friends. Sadness yeah, there lies. Yeah, do not do this, people. No, no, do not do this. Stay away. We, I mean, we've seen the movie Her, so we know we, we know that's a problem already. Yeah. Um, because it wasn't a, it wasn't that great of a movie, honestly. No, it was but, a horrible movie, actually. Yeah. Okay. Glad I'm not not the only one that thought that. No. Um. I, oh, that's right. The box office thought thought that too. <laughs> um. So yeah, th- there's all these uh, you know AI companions coming out. But the next article I have should dissuade you from getting one, no matter what. Your AI girlfriend is a data harvesting horror show. <laughs> hey, take you. You don't say that about my girlfriend. She's no horror show. <laughs> um. Now we know what Mozilla is up to. This Valentine's Day, a warning about the dark side of AI romance. Mozilla's privacy not included project reveals that AI girlfriends and boyfriends, well, and who's, yeah, I guess a few boyfriends out there, I'm sure, while marketed as digital companions are actually massive data harvesting operations. Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? According to the study, these AI chatbots, including well-known names like Replica and Chai, are prying into users' most personal information, ranging from sexual health to medication use, and in most cases, selling or sharing this data. Shockingly, these apps are among the worst offenders in Mozilla's privacy review, with nearly all failing to meet basic privacy and security standards. (laughs) Romantic AI even utilized over, wait for it, 24,000 trackers in just one minute. How is that possible? (laughs) Unbelievable. I mean, I feel so bad for people that feel the need to get to this point, but Jesus Christ. Yeah. (sighs) God. Man, oh man. You know, the initial promise of the internet was like, there will be, there will be a, a lid for every pot out there. Whatever you're into, you will find people into it. I guess not. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yep. People just got lazy and mm. we lost Live Journal. Honestly, Live Journal was where all the weirdos and freaks went. You know, Tumblr. that was the best place. Yeah, Tumblr for a bit. Mm. That wasn't Live Journal was just the 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 OG. I love that. I got more dates on Live Journal than any any other service. Even beat Twitter, believe it or not. Um so yeah, this is this is this is not surprising. I got another story in a second. We'll get to that. We'll we'll, we'll cap that off with. Uh, we've got AI monitoring employee comms for thought crimes in Slack and more. Uh, basically, this is an article that talks about how major companies are basically putting out uh, AI sniffers to read your Slack chats, your team chats, your Zoom meetings, and all this crap, looking right. for thought crimes, seeing who's getting <laughs> ready to to quit or possibly steal company secrets. 
Yeah. That kind or of thing. start a union. Right. You know? <laughs> start a union. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yep. Oh, Starbucks. So, yeah. Don't go on the Starbucks. I say Starbucks chat. is in there. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Yep. So somebody gave me a Starbucks gift card the other day and I have no idea what to do with it. I mean, you know, when you're, when you're a little blocked up, beets prune juice. No, because you have to stay in the st- – get in the drive through line for 45 minutes just to get your coffee. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no. I don't know. LA, if you've been, You haven't been to L.A., at least in, out here in the Valley, that often. But the drive through line for Starbucks is usually three blocks long. No. I don't understand it. I'm like, it's, it's just a cup of coffee. It's the worst coffee. It's just the it, worst. And it's, and it's still just coffee. Yes. I mean, come <laughs> on. It's coffee. Yeah. I mean, I won't stand in line that long for In-N-Out. And that's like, you know, God's hamburger. I, except so many I'm show gonna... titles today. <laughs> God's hamburger. It's a shame we're not going to use that one. I know. I have to, oh. have to pull that one back out of the archives sometime. <laughs> we'll use it for a recap show. Um, <laughs> You're right, yeah. though. It is fucking God's hamburger. I'm dying I'm right now. You. I'm, I'm going to buy a fucking flight just to go get a burger. <laughs> I'll go get us in line right okay. now. Just tell me, By the time I land. You. Exactly. <laughs> we'll be ready to get you in. Oh, so uh, chat GPT is going to get a memory. Okay. Just what we want. Just what we uh, want. Actually, so it can remember all those chats that you had with it late at night when you're beating your meat because chat GPT is your girlfriend. <laughs> exactly. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, man. Um, Just one more tracker. Things... One more tracker. <laughs> 23,998. 23,999. 24,000. Woo. <laughs> oh. Now, uh, this hasn't been rolled out to everybody yet. It will be. It will be coming soon for paid subscribers. Um, and the the annoying thing about this is is that it is going to be. It looks like it's going to be global and not chat specific because it would be great if it was just chat specific because mm-hmm. you could open up a chat, train that chat, and just keep it and just go back to it and reference it and teach it all this stuff. Yeah, let it become self aware because you've left it open for three days. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but I don't want all of it to get thrown into memory because I do put in a lot of random shit, uh, summarizing articles and writing stuff for other people. And, yeah. you know, I mean, we're going to be writing things about terrorists and blue check marks and Elon in a little bit here. So I don't want it to remember that for, for most <laughs> things. Uh, you will be able to wipe it. Um, Selectively as, or just in general? Quote, unquote. Right. No, in general. Yeah, see, that's the problem. Uh, but if you, you can do also, selective, that'd be nice. You can. You can have it delete specific memories yeah. by telling it to. <laughs> What's the oh, best way to that. kill my mm, – delete that one. <laughs> what are the effects of cyanide on a 47-year-old wo- – I mean, um, <laughs> theoretically, if one was going to write a story about killing one's wife, how would one go about it? <laughs> and, and forget I said that after you answer it. Yes, selectively. But remember everything else about me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So there, there, there will have some uh, memory management tools, but I think, I think for the most part, it would be great if, like I said, if this was on a per chat thing. Yeah. Because there are things that I want to train it on to do a specific task that that I have uh, text expander snippets for. Yeah. That I just have to put in every time, and just to have it trained up, and then it's like, boom, okay. No, I, this. I, how great would it be if we could train it in the grumpy old geek's voice? Because you know, it could just start writing all the summaries for me. Fantastic. But do I want it to do everything in the grumpy old geek's voice? I get fired. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I actually started spinning up uh, uh, one of their, uh, what you call it, um, the, your own chat GPT AI. Yeah. You know, because in the marketplace, you can spin up your own and you can train it. And I started throwing our transcripts at it. Oh, great. So. Let, me know when the, let me know how that's going. <laughs> It's a pain in the ass because I first I have to I, I I I'm trying to remember my basic shell scripting 101 and how to use cat <laughs> you know the other day I actually typed man cat for the first time <laughs> since probably 1992 or when Manimal like, was on the air ah uh, yes man we're going uh, deep with references yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm just I'm, I'm trying to remember my pipe references. I'm like, how do I pipe? Because I need to pipe this directory of files into oh, this see, now you're, and concatenate the entire. Now you're getting just, into the girlfriend AI again. Oh, I know, I know. With my pipe and references. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, we'll get there and we'll have a we'll have it in sometime. But you have to manually up. You can't like select a bunch of files to upload. You have to select them one at a time. Right. Which is a pain in the ass. That's why I'm just a, con- trying to concatenate the entire thing into one long document. <laughs> Some, and since we have 650 of them. At some point, you're just going to be able them. to dump the RSS feed in. 
that would be nice. Yep. That would be nice. By the time I'm done with it, that yeah. feature will come out. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Uh, NVIDIA is trying to start a new chatbot that will run locally on your PC, of course, using NVIDIA chips. Yes. Uh, if you've got the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 30 series GPUs or higher and at least eight gigabytes of VRAM. And you aren't using you it to, to mine able- Bitcoin. <laughs> exactly. Or ETH. Um, you will be able to run your own personal girlfriend on your own computer, Ooh, which oh, is nice. which is what – look at it. Anybody who's going to have a virtual girlfriend, I guarantee has a, at least a GeForce RTX 30 sitting around or a couple of them. Best Come way on. to destroy my NVIDIA card because I don't like my girlfriend <laughs> anymore and then delete that. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, wait for that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, OpenAI has also released a new video model called Sora. Now, this has cool. taken over Twitter. This has taken over the world. And I am, my I am the world. curious about your point that they you don't think that they look good. Now, obviously, I'm probably seeing a very highly curated feed on Twitter of people that love this product, and the videos look amazing. Watch the feet. Okay. Watch the feet. And watch the uh, – there's one with uh, these, these cubs that are – like, give me a video of five cubs playing, mm-hmm. and it starts out with three – and then they morph into four and then, then morph into five and seven and they roll around into this giant hydra of fur at the end. It is a cheap, low-rent acid trip at this <laughs> right. point. Uh, I'm sure it's going to get better, but uh, there are things like – if you there's this one of this woman walking um, – uh, this Asian woman walking in like apparently like you know these streets at night. Mm-hmm. Watch the feet. Watch okay. everybody's feet. Everybody's floating. Nobody has. There's no. There's no permanence in placement. If you know what to look for, these things are. They, it's glaring. Okay. If you just look for the basics. So then before it, it was but, look at fingers. Now it's look at feet. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ten and ten. Fingers and toes, baby. Fingers and toes. So I'm sure this is going to get better, and this they can do this up to a minute, but it's not out yet. Right. So. Th- Think about the Gemini uh, demo that we got a couple weeks ago. Yes. It was like, Google Gemini, you know, shave my balls. It's like, okay, done. <laughs> Show these shiny marbles. No, that's not how good it works. Yeah. Uh, and I'm I'm sure that these are highly curated because the only demos that you see right now are the ones that OpenAI released. Okay, gotcha. So, yeah, so yeah there's nothing out there that – yeah, these are all from them. Okay. So, yeah, just hold on for that. Um, yeah, don't fire your uh, – your uh, VFX crew just yet. <laughs> so, and uh, the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office has finally come out and said, "No, we're done with this. AI cannot hold a patent. Good. It must be. You can use it to help, mm-hmm. but you have to prove that a human did the the you know the, the majority of the work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. The humans did the hard parts, please. Right. So there we go. Okay. Finally. Good. This episode is brought to you by Mood. Have you ever thought about elevating your THC experience, not to just feel good, but also to boost your creativity, focus, and energy? Well, I have some exciting news for all you cannabis enthusiasts. Mood has just launched their most potent product yet, introducing the hemp-based THCA flower. This edition marks a new era in the legal THC world. And it's something you've got to try, along with Mood's fantastic range of flour, gummies, vapes, and more. And here's a treat. Mood is offering our listeners a free THCA pre-roll and 20% off your first order. Just head over to hellomood.com and use our exclusive code GOG. I tried several of their products from the Uplifting Energized to the Mellow Chill, and I must say each provided a unique, enjoyable high. My favorite, definitely the Creative Strain. It sparked an incredible flow of ideas and had me breezing through my projects. Mood's latest introduction, the THCA Flower, is a game changer, offering the classic cannabis high with a twist. With 10 high-inducing strains, it's their most potent lineup yet. What's even better is that all Mood products are extracted from hemp, making them federally legal and are regularly tested to ensure the highest quality. Sourced from small family farms, you're getting a product that's effective and pesticide-free. Whether you're new to THC or a seasoned aficionado, Mood has something for every vibe. Their in-house experts have tailored different strains to match specific moods, offering a range of products to suit any preference. From delectable gummies to classic flour and convenient pre-rolls, there's a multitude of ways to enjoy Mood's offerings. 
Try Mood's new THC A flower today. For a limited time only, get 20% off your first order in a free THC A pre roll. Just go to hellomood.com and use promo code GOG. That's hello, M O O D.com, code GOG for 20% off your order in a free THC A pre roll. Elevate your mood with Mood today. <laughs> The library. Ooh, the... I finished a new book, Jason. It's called Infinity Gate, the Pandemonium Book Number One by M. R. Carey. You just told me not to do any spoilers, so I won't because you're listening to it right now. Uh, <laughs> you can tell me if it's good or not. Just don't put any plot spoilers. It is. It is good. Uh, there is a uh, in the middle. I got lost for a little bit and I was like, oh, okay. God, this is dragging. This is dragging. This is dragging. But I love the premise. I, I like the story. It ended on one hell of a cliffhanger. Uh, it picked up from that middle bit. There was just there's one character that is a major character. And it was like the the origin story of the major major that that major character that I was just like not into. And it kind of took me out of the book for a bit. And I was I was debating not finishing it because life is short but i'm glad i I made my way through so i enjoyed it uh the main conceit is it's basically you know we've talked we talked about the long earth series by terry pratchett and stephen baxter a lot because we loved it so much um Mm -hmm. you know the skipping over to parallel earths this is that but a different and darker take on it so i i really liked it i am not going to go straight into the second book because i've learned my lesson we talk about that all the time going to read something else first and then i'm going to go into book two so all right yep that's that's my plan too because I'm, I'm i'm about a third of the way into the book mm-hmm. and i dig it yeah it's i good. really dig it's it good. yeah it's and because you basically your your second line in here where you said a, dar- a different darker take on the long earth i'm like sign me up <laughs> I'm sign in. me up right away and the other thing is it really made me want to go read the long earth series again i downloaded them all back to my phone <laughs> so yeah because yeah. i don't remember the last two because I, I remember the first three really well, and I don't remember the last two. I so forgot that, that there were five of them, so I'm very excited. I think that's <laughs> why, because I forgot that there were five as well. I thought there were only three, and I'm like, there were five? Yep. And it's marked as, as red? What? Okay. <laughs> I guess I'll go back and check them out. Yeah, so at some point, I'm, I'm going to finish this Pandemonium series. It's only two, as far as I can tell. Or at least there's just two out, so I suppose two when, out, I, yeah. when I finish the second one, I'm going to discover this is an ongoing series, of course. But it's good. It is definitely good. So I, I'm, I'm glad you're along for the ride. The Dark Side. Ha! With Dave. Welcome to The Dark Side with Dave, with podcast super host Dave Bittner. Dave is the host of the CyberWire podcast for all your cybersecurity news. The co-host of Hacking Humans with Joe Kerrigan, discussing how humans are mean. The co-host of Caveat with Ben Yellen, because people are nosy. And the host of Control Loop, because industrial machines are going to take over the world because of AI and people who just want to steal our money. And it's a horrible thing. Hi, Dave. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, Dave. Uh, hey, listen, before we jump into uh, our scheduled stories here today, I, I saw in the rundown that you guys were talking about this new thing from OpenAI with the videos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this was getting lots of conversation uh, around the virtual uh, lunch table here at uh, CyberWire. And Ooh, uh, do tell, it's do really tell. something. Uh, well, um, I think they look amazing for what they are. I mean, are, is there a is there a creep factor on some of them? Yes, absolutely. But just uh, like I would hate to be in the stock footage business today mm. because oh, I yeah. think that now we don't know how long it takes to generate these things. So if it takes an hour to generate a one minute clip, then a stock footage library is still probably the better choice for somebody who uses it regularly but Mm -hmm. to be able to generate anything and have it be photorealistic especially like you know to generate make a high wide shot of new york city at dawn you know boom (laughs) there it is uh it's pretty amazing Um, yeah for things like that puppies look like puppies all all 17 of them as they keep replicating well, they'll well, fix and that. Let's, uh, <laughs> let, let us not forget that, uh, you know, in about two months when that's a little bit better, our entire feed is going to be flooded with, let's have a video of Joe Biden falling down again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's coming. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> okay, yeah, Dave, I'm going to tell you bad what, timing. Yeah, it's definitely bad timing. Uh, I'm going to tell you what I told Brian. Uh, you can tell your CyberWire friends. Watch the feet. So 
Yeah. Uh, when you're when you're watching when you're watching these people walk, none of them they, none of them stick. They're all they're all kind of floating just a little bit, like they've got those roller skate sneakers on, you know. So right, that's or true. like somebody it's... fell in love in a Looney Tunes cartoon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or also like the running loops uh, from like Scooby Doo. You know, when they'd be <laughs> running yeah. that hallway, their feet wouldn't quite be attached to the the floor. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And there's one where like the the one of the people's legs just switch <laughs> spontaneously. <laughs> yeah. And they have trouble with fingers and, and this, that, and the other thing. But still with yeah, all those nitpicks to just like, yeah, the dogs look like dogs. That's the thing that gets me. Like until they split I, and become multiples. And then they, they, they tell you, it's like a cheap acid trip for me. I'm like, mm. I do not flashbacks. Bad, bad. <laughs> you don't need this. No, you don't need I this don't. In your life. No. <laughs> I need a safe space. Asparagus, asparagus. <laughs> yeah. Well. It'll uh, get better. But also remember that this is the cream of the crop, the creme de la creme, yes. the best that they this can possibly do. This is being released do. by them and only them and yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you've, sort of if you've ever seen the Firefly site from Adobe that has all of their generative AI stuff up there and they have their galleries and stuff like that that, you know, what can be done with it. There is no way that most people are making that stuff out of that. I try any of those prompts even and it comes out like like, like that really horrible scene from The Fly. You mm-hmm. know? <laughs> that's that's more of what it's like than, you know, so, some beautiful yeah. parrot floating through the air. No. No, I mean it's true, but it's also you know, the 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 picture of the hamburger up on the menu board at McDonald's has, bears no resemblance <laughs> to what they actually give you in the bag. So This is true. Yes. <laughs> we're, we're used to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Reality is fungible. Mm-hmm. Well, we have a bit of Star Wars news. I, I don't recall if you watched this show, Dave, because I remember there was some you, – you were kind of a live action guy and not an animated guy. But uh, The Bad Batch is coming, season three, which will be the final season on February 21st. I personally love the show. I think it's it's really good. So I'm looking forward to this. I'll have to revisit it. My son and I started watching it and and it just didn't stick. Uh, Mm -hmm. Didn't find the first few episodes all that compelling. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I got uh, too many Aussies. I don't know. (laughs) But uh, but if you say it's good, I'll I'll give it a revisit. What, what What in particular do you like about it? Um, It's just that it's that whole thing that we kind of discussed a bit with the Mandalorian, which is Star Wars that works without a Jedi. Like, mm. we don't need Skywalkers. We don't need Darth Vader. We don't need the Empire. It's just like, it, it's, you know, it's what a good pre Han Solo, like Han Solo origin story should be. It's, it's mm-hmm. like these mercenaries out there and just kind of trying to make their way in the universe that's not so nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. These are the, the blue collar guys <laughs> in the yeah. Star Wars universe. Yeah. yeah. So I, I really enjoy it. It's, it's a good time. All right. Well, I'll I'll revisit it. I I don't recall specifically why it didn't stick, but uh, willing to give it another try. Mm-hmm. Do we have any Andor news? Do we know anything about when that season coming back? two has finished principal shooting? All Woo! shooting is wrapped. So uh, now they're firing up the AI for the special effects. Okay. So we'll yeah, they were just out. waiting for this release from OpenAI to get, <laughs> mm-hmm. get yeah. it done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So no feet will touch grounds on season two. Well, and it's okay for the aliens to have multiple weird fingers. So. <laughs> yeah. We're good. It, it all works We're good. out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wanted to highlight this story that's been making the rounds that's pissing me off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, that's probably too strong a description. It's perturbing me. Um, so the the breathless headlines say uh, cyber criminals are stealing iOS users' face scans to break into mobile banking accounts. Mm-hmm. Now, the first round of headlines about this said cyber – in fact, I think – I want to say that the first round of this article I've linked to said cyber criminals are stealing iOS users' face ID scans to break into mobile banking accounts. Right. I they think were specific. They've updated. I think they've updated this <laughs> because – They're scaling it back as we go along. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So the idea here is that – there are some bad guys uh, from China who are being called Gold Factory by uh, researchers from Group IB. And basically what they're doing is, is they're tricking people with iOS devices 
um, to install some management software. And then as part of the onboarding of that management software, they're asking you to go through a facial scanning process. Um, and then they're using the scan that that generates and sends to them. They're running that through um, uh, deep fake software to then be able to access your bank account. Right. And get in there. So and and this is all this is taking place primarily in Thailand, um, where the Thai government has a digital app that uses facial scans to provide security. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all the articles for this were saying that they were accessing face ID. And this this was the first time that face ID had been breached in this way. Right. And I read this and I don't think this has anything to do with face ID. Mm -mm. All no. they're doing is taking your picture. Yeah. Yeah. Which they can and get then anywhere. running it through. Yeah. Yeah. And because mm -hmm. it's my understanding and I reserve the right to be wrong that the way face ID works, you don't have access to it. It is part of the secure enclave. It does its thing. And all Face ID does is say yes or no. Is this the person, like the software asks, is this the person I'm asking it to be? Face ID does a scan and says yes or no. Either this matches our, our pre-existing scan or it doesn't. But you can't export that data. You don't correct. have access to it. It, it nope. doesn't yeah. provide. It, so you, you concur with my understanding on that is correct? 100%. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And yet we have this story. <laughs> <laughs> this is still, they forgot the word as. It's stealing face as ID because that's all yeah. it is. There's yeah. people. This it's a bad app in Thailand that's using you know facial scanning as the ID, and somebody's just getting more pictures and saying, "Hey, here we go," and then just you know probably matching the format and sending it along. Right. I'm willing to cut them a, just a teensy weensy little bit of slack because I think face ID has become synonymous with the term of art of yeah. facial scan, facial holding scan, your phone right. up, having it look at you and determine whether to give you access or not. I think people generically refer to that as face ID. Yes. Right. So a little tiny bit of slack, but the, the headlines here have all been just as, as we so often see uh, breathless about. Uh, well, the whole time that you were talking about this story, the back of my mind is just like firing off. Goom, 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 goom. Mine too. I'm glad this you reminds it, me <laughs> of how many times we were on this show, this very show, talking about are our phones listening to us? And we refute it. <laughs> and then oh, no. the, the stories keep on coming <laughs> and they are listening to us. And we refute it again and again and again. Are they though? Are they right. just like you typed up there <laughs> and we're saying no, but then we had this big bombshell just a few months ago, right? There was this company yeah. that came out and said, why, yes, we are using your phones to listen to you, mm -hmm. but we've heard fuck all about that since then. Whatever happened? I think they're buried outside of Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, the only other thing I saw about that was that those claims may have been greatly exaggerated. That's what they, I figured. <laughs> and they backed off of them, that they weren't actually listening because it is not practical to do so. Right. Okay. Uh, so it was the marketing people exaggerating their capabilities to try to make a sale. Imagine that happening. Oh, I've my goodness. Never heard of that. Marketing <laughs> going askew and around. But maybe we should oh. just rebrand re re this show as, are they, though? <laughs> are they? Yeah. <laughs> Right. It turns yep. out. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah. Okay. So you can tell I, I kind of have my dander up about that. I, I did share my uh, skepticism about it on uh, Mastodon and, and there were some folks who chimed in and said, yeah, this I think you're on the right track here. This is, doesn't yeah. seem to have anything to do with Face ID. No, Which no, Mastodon? Are you still on Hackaderm? Is that your Mastodon of choice still? I am indeed. Yes, I am okay. on Hackaderm.io. Okay, I just I just mm. reinstalled it the other day because I wanted wanted to check some things out that I posted up there before, and I, I I have like three different Mastodon accounts on three different servers. I thought Hackaderm was the one that you set me up with, so yeah, okay. I've been enjoying it. I, I have to say the transition from Twitter to Mastodon has suited me well, and it, it I, I suspect a lot of it is just my personality type, but it seems like 
folks on Mastodon are less interested in chasing numbers, like follower numbers, and more interested in actual meaningful interaction. It's, it's, it hasn't been taken over by marketers. Correct. That's, yeah. Or influencers. Or, or influencers, yeah. You got to yeah. want to be there. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you do. That's true. <laughs> and, and, you know, there, some people have pointed out that, it, that in some ways – there are people on there who do make it feel like it's an HOA. Um, you know, woe <laughs> you be cannot have you. a purple background. <laughs> well, the main thing that that the thing that always comes up is if you don't include descriptions of your images that you post, right? You will be uh, descended upon with great force and reminded in no uncertain terms that you are a horrible person for leaving out. You know, all the people who have vision issues, Wait, which is a legitimate AI concern. Do that now. No, well, there is a really. button. There is a button <laughs> that, is. where you can oh, have it look at the image and automatically generate a description. So <laughs> that should just the... be, they should just bake it in. If you don't put it in a description, boom, that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Alt text Nazis. I can't mm -hmm. believe it. Well, <laughs> it's 2024, Jason, and we're still this dealing with true. it. This yeah. is true. This is true. So nothing's perfect, but um, – you know, after the Twitter schism uh, where people went their separate ways, I'm pretty happy landing on Mastodon. So I think at least for the time being until it gets ruined, that's where I'm hanging out. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, I, I've been playing with local uh, large language models mm -hmm. on my MacBook Pro. And I was curious if either of you had played with this LM Studio app. Are you guys familiar with this? I'm familiar with it. I haven't tried it yet because I just haven't had time. So do tell. I'm, I'm very interested in your experience. So – it's a free open source project. It's called LM Studio. Um, and basically, it's a front end that lets you load in some of the various open source uh, LLMs onto your system and run them. Mm -hmm. um, you need a powerful machine and you need lots of RAM. Uh, I wish I had more RAM. I, my MacBook Pro has 16 gigs of RAM. Ooh. Um, ooh, ooh. Sorry. Yeah, so... <laughs> Well, I mean, but for the, what you I mean, that, normally do day to day, it's more than enough. Exactly. Day to day operations, all the audio stuff I do, that's plenty. Um, so this is the first time that, that I've wished I had more RAM. This is also the first time that I've seen all 10 processors on my MacBook Pro pegged when this <laughs> thing is running. Um, but it's cool and it works and it's fast and it does what you ask it to do. Uh there is one, I, I'll include a, a link, there's uh, one um, sample library that's called Lily, and Lily has been trained on cybersecurity. Huh? All right. Okay. S and there are various models that are trained on different things that you might be interested in. So if you're uh, like us and you're a nerdy person who likes playing around with things, I have to say this felt very old school to me. In a good way. It looks that way, just from the from the demos that are running on the site. It's a, a very appealing old school interface. Yeah. Like, like you're playing a text game, like Leader yeah, Solari like, or something. Right, right. <laughs> For those of us of a certain generation, it, it, there's uh, – where I say when computers were fun, um, this is a callback to that, I think, despite that what ultimately what you're doing is running a large language model on it. Right. But, so I'm going to I'm going to set up Lily and ask Lily if our phones are listening to us. <laughs> there you go. Please report back. <laughs> uh, and then finally, uh, I want to include a link here that uh, the folks over at Prop Store have an auction coming up. Uh, so if you're into movie props and things, this is a big one and seems like a good one. One of the highlights here is. Um, Anthony Daniels, who's C-3PO, is mm -hmm. auctioning off his entire collection. Wow. Must so, be some money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that all the other job offers haven't come pouring in for him. I don't know why. But <laughs> um, So if you want a screen-used C-3PO, you can get one. All right. Um, and uh, you can buy Captain Picard's chair from the bridge of – the Enterprise D. Um, there's a Stormtrooper helmet from Return of the Jedi. There's a Indiana Jones jacket, uh, stunt stunt person. You know, these are all screen used items. Wow. So, if this is your thing and you're rich, uh, <laughs> check out. <laughs> 
<laughs> Check out the prop store auction. I, it, it's a little annoying that just in order to download a PDF of the catalog, you have to register for the auction, which includes putting in your payment information. I think I call foul on that. Yeah. So I'm yeah. kind of on the fence if I'm going to do I that. I get or not, having to drop an email, but not a credit card. Yeah, exactly. As much as I would like to look through this catalog, because you know, there's a I'd lot of alien stuff in here. Mm-hmm. Back to the well, there's future. There's a lot of Back to the Future, and that's my wife's favorite movie. So if I were rich, I would be getting her a very cool birthday present. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, the yeah, producer's there's some assistant. stuff from Blade Runner. Yeah, I was going to say the producer's assistant script from uh, personal script from Blade Runner. That's kind of cool. Hmm. Yeah, there's a matte painting from Blade Runner. There's, there's, it's, yeah. So. I don't know. The prop store folks seem to be at the the top of this sort of thing, and uh, this is a good one. So if that's your thing, check it out. Very cool. Oh, my God. They've got the glaive from Krull starting at $10,000. I wish I was rich. (laughs) Oh, oh, I want that. (laughs) First draft script from The Breakfast Club. That is pretty cool. Surely one of our listeners must be rich. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we can. We will register for our preferred items. <laughs> That's right. Wouldn't that be great? Uh, I would like Which, lot 193, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What do you think? Uh, Harry Potter stuff. That's going to go for a lot of money. Very cool. Mm-hmm. There are 68 pages of stuff in here. <laughs> this is insane. Well, I know what I'm doing the rest of the day. Talk to you guys later. (laughs) Yeah, I got to get back to this. I'll see you guys. (laughs) All right. Yeah. Closing shout outs. Over at Patreon, we've got Brian and Mason says, keep doing the Lord's work, gentlemen. Best podcast in existence. Well, thank you, Mason. And thank you, Brian. Thank you. And remember, you too can become a Patreon subscriber for only $3 a month. You can give us more if you want, but. uh, We'll put it in Atmos for that three bucks, just like Amazon. (laughs) You do get it in high res and a little bit early. Could be five minutes, could be five hours. It's a game. You just, you you take your chance. Yep. Over at PayPal, we've got Miles, Shari, Natalie, Linda, Blake Bowling, Nathaniel, Ramsey, Emmanuel, Dag, Michael with a big 50 bucks. Woohoo. He's the magnet guy. All right. So he did still listen to the show. He got, he did get his stickers. So thank you, Michael. Uh, Gregory also with 50 bucks and Ben with a big $100. And he said, I had a good chuckle when I got mentioned on the show for offering a bribe to get Jason's scanner, so I'm throwing the bribe your way anyways. All the best to you guys. Thank you, everybody. And over the tip jar, we got Theodore, Joseph, Panos, NL, and Sean. Woohoo! All right. And we have an anonymous review, but it was five stars. Don't know where this is going. Y'all keep it up. Unlike many TV shows and podcasts, this show just keeps going on with great quality. Usually after about 20 episodes or less, a podcast becomes complete crap. We did that in three been listening for seven years and still feels fresh i won't stop listening until you guys do keep polluting the sound waves with this great podcast sincerely a grumpy young geek p.s i'm the zillennial from last year all right i don't, I don't remember there were five books in the long earth series i don't remember his zillennial from last <laughs> exactly. year i don't know what i had for breakfast <laughs> <laughs> Who, what am i doing why is there a microphone in front of me yeah seriously this is weird hmm. Until next time, I'm Brian Schulmeister. <laughs> you forgot to do the I outro. I the outro. See? I thought we were done. <laughs> and I'm Jason DeFilippo. Thanks for listening to Grumpy Old Geeks. Show notes and links for everything we talked about today are at GOG.show slash 636. GOG.show slash donate is the place to drop us a few bills so we can keep bringing you this top-notch entertainment. Sharing the show with your friends and enemies or anyone in between is free and can be almost as good as cash. Almost. At GOG.show, you can find a link to our Discord channel if you want to chat with us and other show fans. Head on over to GOG.show slash contact to send us your feedback, comments, or links to cool shit that you think we should talk about. GOG.show slash review is where you can toss us a review and preferably five stars that we can read on the air. Stay. What the fuck was that word? Oh, yeah. Grumpy. Grumpy. <laughs>